Welcome. If you're looking for an amazing destination, this could be it. Nestled between lush mountains and the Atlantic Ocean, Rio de Janeiro is a city that captivates visitors and is famous for its picturesque beaches, most notably Copacabana and Ipanema. The iconic Christ the Redeemer statue and Sugarloaf Mountain. The Bohemian neighborhood of Santa Teresa or the sprawling favelas that dominate the hillside. In addition, it has a rich cultural heritage with warm and welcoming locals that contribute to the city's infectious energy. So let's take a look at this magical place. Our highlights are in no particular order. Before we get started, don't forget to subscribe, comment and turn on a notification for more travel content. Christ the Redeemer this iconic monument is one of the most famous and recognizable landmarks in the world. It was completed in 1931 and stands at an impressive 30 meters with its outstretched arms spanning 28 meters. To view this, we must get from this and this into a van, then make our way up Kukavadu Mountain. Once at the top, we got to enjoy the breathtaking panoramic views of Rio, Sugarloaf Mountain, Copacabana Beach and Guanabara Bay. Next on the list of my favourite places is Sugarloaf Mountain. This UNESCO World Heritage destination is one of Rio's most prominent landmarks, made of granite and quartz, with a distinctive shape that resembles a loaf of refined sugar, hence the name. Riding a bicycle offers a unique way to explore the city's vibrant energy, natural beauty and iconic landmarks. The bike I take you app and we were off. As we pedal along the streets and bike paths, it was interesting to see the sights and culture that makes Rio such a captivating destination. We started our adventure in the lively neighbourhood of Copacabana, known for its stunning beaches and bustling atmosphere. Continuing our journey, we rode through the renowned Ipanema Beach. 
This section seemed to have more trendy boutique cafes and restaurants. Beach soccer, come volleyball, is known as foot volley. The game is typically played by two teams, divided by a net. It was impressive to see the type of skill needed. Players use their feet, chest, head, and any other part except their hands. Next was Leblon Beach, known for its excellent surfing conditions. We just sat here and took in how beautiful this place is. Lastly, on our way home, we took in a taste of Rio's natural beauty. Then we ended the day with a quick healthy meal. Santa Teresa is where we ended up staying for about a week. It's a hilltop district with a charming bohemian and village-like vibe. Steep winding streets aligned with elegant old mansions, run-down homesteads and quaint boutique hotels, quirky cocktail bars, romantic restaurants and art galleries. We stumbled across the ever popular bar Du Minero where we had a few ales. The draw card however was a local talent playing. Afterwards we were hungry for some street food. We came across this charming lady selling acaya which is a stuffed fritter made by blending black eyed peas, salt, pepper and onions in a dough. Then it's deep fried, split open and stuffed with shrimp and topped with batupa or Kairuru. The wooden seats and open windows gave it that old feel. The initial part takes you through the bustling streets of downtown Rio with its modern buildings. Then it starts to climb, passing through the neighborhoods of Lapa, famous for its nightlife and samba clubs. We also caught glimpses of colorful street art and widespread inappropriate graffiti. The first operation by electrical power was made in 1896. However, they were built in 2015 as a replica of the previous fleet, making it one of the oldest street railway lines in the world. Passing historical buildings and breathtaking views of the city. Behind us was the outskirts of the city it was definitely a good way to see the rest of Santa Teresa since we only previously walked the area around our Airbnb. To reach the maze, we jumped into a 1.4 litre locally made combi, which incidentally ceased production in 2013 after 56 years. This cultural icon somehow managed to climb the hillside crunching gears and passing crumbling colonial houses and abandoned cars. To a point where the doors open, we got out and used Google Maps to make our way through the narrow, makeshift alleyways. What were we thinking? It took over a decade for the vision of a local artist, Bob Nakani, located in the Traverse Bastos Favelli community in the southern zone of Rio de Janeiro. We were assured the area was safe as the Brazilian squad headquarters was nearby. This unique architectural space has an art gallery, jazz bar, as well as an Airbnb and cultural centre. Over the years, international travellers, artists and workaway volunteers put life and art into this rabbit warren.
As we were staying in the neighborhood of Santa Teresa, we got an early start. Walking through the alleyways of graffiti art, we made our way to what they call the Celeron Steps. Originally, this work of art began in 1990 by Jorge Celeron, a Chilean traveler come artist, as a personal tribute to the multicultural essence of Rio. Each tile tells a unique story. We even found one from down under. What started off as a palatial home and then turned into a hotel and then a presidential home is now the Republic Museum. From 1897 to 1960, the Cartiti Palace served as Brazil's presidential palace. The splendor of a bygone era is definitely worth the visit, especially if you're interested in the political history of Brazil. Our next visit was not what we expected. This prominent religious landmark located in the heart of Rio was designed by architect Edgar Fonsisi. The unique structure is inspired by the Mayan pyramids and features a modernist style and was completed in 1979. At the center is a suspended bronze crucifix weighing a thousand kilos. It reaches a height of 75 meters and it can accommodate up to 20,000 worshippers, making it one of the largest cathedrals in the world. Next was the Portuguese reading room, holding more than 350,000 volumes, including rare books, historical documents, and rare manuscripts. Equally impressive is the stained glass dome and the floor to ceiling shelves that soar three stories. This place provides a peaceful environment for visitors to study, read, and appreciate the richness of the library's collection.